So for those wondering about new Apple Watches, such as the Series 9 and the second gen Ultra, we do have a few new tidbits. So let's delve into Apple's 2023 Apple Watch range. So Mark Gurman recently gave us a vague breakdown of which products we can expect later in 2023 and specifically told us both a Series 9 and an Apple Watch Ultra 2 are in the works with the codenames N207, N208, and N210. I do wonder by the way why there's three code names for two new products, but anyways there's that. Now a new regular Apple Watch is not surprising considering we see that release yearly anyways, but I'm definitely a little surprised we're getting a new Ultra so soon because what exactly are they going to change with this? Well we'll get to that but let's first talk about the Apple Watch Series 9 because we do have a little more info regarding this. Mark Gurman says this refresh is going to be focused on the chip because for those not aware, Apple's basically been reusing the same chip inside for the last three years. While they call today's chip the S8, this actually is identical to the S6 and the S7. And by the way, would like to remind you guys, like this video and subscribe for more content like this. It would be appreciated. Now, to be fair, for an Apple Watch, these chips are plenty good, but speed improvements are always appreciated, and German believes the S9 in the Series 9 is going to be on par with the A15. Now, for those curious, the current chips are on par with the A13, so we're jumping to 5 nanometers, and on the whole, it should be a decent upgrade. Now, some may be wondering, why is Apple giving us performance on par with a two-year iPhone processor? Well, remember that, of course, 3 nanometers, which we're expecting to come to this year's iPhone 15 Pro is very expensive and also has a low yield rate. So sticking to A15 as a base for the S9 makes sense since Apple already produces A15 for a ton of their products and it's going to be cheaper to make whilst offering enough of a performance boost for these new watches. Because at the end of the day, guys, most are likely not going to see much of a difference between a 3 nanometer and 5 nanometer chip in a watch. So yeah, the S9 being based on A15 is already pretty good. Another great thing about this chip upgrade is efficiency because it's fair to say that many have wanted battery upgrades with the Apple Watch. And while we did get that with the Ultra, the regular watches are still offering just 18 hours of endurance. And so maybe the new chip inside could give us one extra hour of endurance. However, I'm hoping that alongside the chip upgrade, Apple does give us a physically larger battery inside, and so that should significantly boost battery life for the regular watches, and would be a big upgrade that many consumers would appreciate. Now on the whole, is the S9 a revolutionary upgrade? No, not really. In fact, I've never once had a performance issue whatsoever with the Series 6, but of course, people hold onto watches for years, and so down the line, you will appreciate the additional performance the S9 has. Take, for example, the Series 3. This had decent performance at launch, but as the hardware got older, it became a sluggish mess. And so three to four years down the line, I'm sure the Series 9 is going to be much faster to use than the Series 6, the 7, and the 8 that may have slowed down with the older chips. I do want to mention, though, before WWDC, I had predicted the big reason Apple was giving us this chip upgrade was because of the huge UI overhaul Gurman told us about, and that did pan out. We do now have more of a focus on these widget-like cards on the watch, and you scroll through them whenever needed. Now, my assumption was that this feature would require a lot more horsepower inside, because these cards are always showing information on the watch, and so it might be laggy on older watches, but should work as intended on the Series 9 because this has the S9 chip. But that was not the case at all, guys. For one, some rumours did suggest the Series 4 and the Series 5 would lose support, which was completely false. But also for those brave enough trying the betas on their main watches, they've basically had no issues. And so I kind of overestimated how taxing this new smart feature was going to be. And ultimately, guys, while I'm sure it's going to be slightly better on the Series 9, it probably won't make that big of a difference. And so yes, like I said before guys, buy the Series 9 if you do want the additional software support, but you're likely not going to see much of a speed difference right now. And ultimately, like I've been suggesting for a while guys, always check if there are deals and discounts on the older watches first, because the new models don't bring that many changes on a yearly basis. And also unlike iPhones, older watches drop in value pretty fast, I got my Series 6 brand new for £100 
just after the Series 7 released. And yes, I don't have the new design language, but this has the same performance and basically offers the same experience for less. And so yes, if you don't need the brand spanking new model that Apple offers, definitely consider buying an older watch for much less. Now coming back to Apple Watch Ultra 2, what can we expect with this? Well, honestly, not much guys. I think the only reason Apple's releasing this is because the Series 9 is getting a new chip inside, and so they have to throw this into the Ultra as well. That's going to be the main change with this, and as I said for the Series 9, this ultimately is a minor refresh. Yes, it could give the watch longer support, and possibly better battery life, but you're realistically not going to see much of a difference. We might even be lucky and get some new color options, because the Ultra only came in one finish, and so that could be a somewhat big change with the second gen model, but yes, that's basically it guys. We have not heard much about this year's Ultra, and if I'm being honest, unless you want the S9 for additional support, get the first gen Ultra for less instead. It's likely going to be in Apple's refurb store pretty soon, and of course, there should be clearance sales via third party retailers. And so I'm definitely going to be recommending many to go down that route, because ultimately this year's watches are a minor refresh. Of course, if you absolutely prioritize support over every other aspect, then buy these watches. But considering the Series 4 is still supported, I don't think we'll have to worry about support for the Series 8 and the first gen Ultra for a long time. Also, you might want to skip this year because we have heard a lot about micro LED panels coming to Apple Watches and specifically the Ultra getting this relatively soon. Now, we were initially expecting a 2024 release for this, but Ross Young now says it's going to release in 2025 instead. Either way, guys, that's not too long away. So yes, if you can wait, that might be the one to get because micro LED is going to eliminate burn-in, which is important considering the watch has an always-on display. And also, of course, we could get higher brightness, which is handy for outdoor use. I'm also hoping there's no price increase, but honestly, guys, I would not be surprised if that's the case. Also, I do want to mention the Ultra is likely going to have this exclusively for a while because obviously Apple won't stop sell consumers to the highest end watch. And this will be the first big display upgrade for the watch since its conception because we've had OLED for nearly a decade. Now, I know this is a rumor at the end of the day, which can be false, but it is from Ross Young, who's a pretty credible source. And so, yeah, basically, here's my advice, guys. If you can't be asked to wait, get the first gen Ultra when the second gen launches. It should be much cheaper and should basically give you 90% of the same experience. And if you can wait, then yeah, get the micro LED watch instead. Anyways, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Make sure to like and subscribe for more content like this. And thank you for watching.